Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Atlant Dice. Let's check it out. Setup for the game is simple. What you're going to do is take all the resources and put them on the tiles. Tiles are three tiles uh, thick here. Uh, you can stack them any way you want. All the tiles have special abilities on them. They're kind of ran you can just randomly shuffle all three in the stacks by their pip value amount. Then you're going to put the black market here. Just basically take three items from each of the other five categories and place them here in the black market. You have a little clockwork thing here that goes starts right here where the arrow is. Then you have all your one victory point tokens over here. You have a first player marker, which actually does make sense in this game. You have a submarine that will start anywhere on the board. And then you'll have these die. Now, depending on the number of players, it depends on how many dice you have. This is for a four player game. And then you just subtract two die for any players less. So three player, two player. You always want to have enough to where each player can grab two die with one die being left over. So let me show you how a three player game works. Basically, first player is going to roll this die and then bring these out and mark them out to the area where they go. So I have a one, two, and three. Now if I rolled a six, a six would go here into the black market. Starting with the first player and then going clockwise, that player is going to pick any one of these die and they're going to uh, get the item that's in that area and do the ability that's on there. Now, there's iconography and it's different on each different tile in each different stack, but the rule book is easy to understand. Once you play this game once, you will understand all the iconography and the extra bonus moves you can do. Sometimes it's, hey, roll a die. If you get a five or six, you get another item here, or you can move an item to another place, or you can move this submarine to another area. What's the deal with the submarine? If you pick an item, if you pick a die where a submarine is, you get two of those items, whatever it is, instead of one. And then you get to do you know, whatever the special action is on that, on that tile. And if ever a tile goes empty, let's say that all these little crystals were gotten by the other players. Well, now you're going to stop and you're going to score this jewel thing. Whoever has the most jewels gets one victory point. Okay? And, well, I'm sorry, second place we get a victory point. First place we get the tile, which is actually three victory points. And they would keep this. And second place would get one. If there's a tie, both players would get one. So that's how, and then after that, everyone dumps back in all their items of that, you know, sort right back where you'd remove the top tile and then put it on the secondary tile right there because Atlantis is sinking. But uh, that's kind of what happens when a thing goes empty. When you're, when everyone's picking turns, let's say second player picked this one, took one, uh, first player took this one, and second player took this one. Now what do you do? With the die left over, you'll see that you have these little clock little turn, turn signals here. And it tells you how many spaces you need to move this clock here. Uh, the clock hand. And this one's two. This is one, one, one. But these can change up. Like you see the bottom one there is three. This one's three there. And so uh, as it's moving along, it may land on one of these other icons here. Now what does that mean? If it lands on one of the random icons, you'll immediately not returning your items back to the pool here, but you'll score one victory point whoever has the most of a certain item. So for instance, if it was these red barrels, uh, whoever had the most would get a victory point. And if it's tied, they would both get a victory point. There's nothing for second on that one. If it has two X's on it, like some of these other squares do, you get two victory points by returning two items back to their area. Okay, and you may want to do that for various reasons. Just get the extra points. There's no way I'm going to win that tile anyway, or I don't want someone to score on that tile, so I'll throw stuff in there. There's actually one of these tiles that can let you take one of the items in an area and throw it into another area. Why would you want to do that? Well, because maybe the books are about to score and you have zero books. You don't want that to score. You're trying to put items in this area here so as not to have that uh, tile score. Uh, the black market, you can take any of them randomly here if you take a six there. Uh, again, you keep playing until this dial, which will eventually get to the end, the little watermark there. When that happens, you do one final scoring. Whoever has the most of each item will take a victory point. Then add up all your victory points, your victory tiles, and whoever has the most victory points wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? I should mention that if ever you run out of one of those scoring tiles, you'll just remove all those items from play. And let's say it was the number three tile that you just scored three times. Well now, anytime you roll a three, you'll put it over with the sixes in the black market. Uh, that has never happened in the three games we've played with this. 
And uh, I don't see, I mean, I'm sure it can happen because the rules say if that happens, here's what you do. But we got down to like one tile on a few of those. Uh, that clock really moves fast. It really goes fast. At first you think, man, we'll never get to the end. And then after a while, uh, you're, you're saying, oh no, I just need one more turn. And that's where this game is. This is, this is pure just a dice selection game. And that's its strategy. But within that one me me mechanism, there's a lot of gameplay and a lot of strategy in there, I should say. Because you're picking a die and you're going, hmm, I'm picking it. Why? Because I want that resource? No, I'm picking it because I want this to be the last remaining die on the board because that will move the hand X amount of spaces to something that I can score on. That's what you're thinking the whole time. Or I want to go, you know, I want to go move the submarine here to get those items. Uh, why would I want people to take two of each item? Because I want that thing to score because I'm winning right now. <laughs> <laughs> or I want to throw items on someone else's area that's about to score because I'm not going to win that. Uh, like I said, me and my nephews played this. They got very strategic after a while, and sometimes you just forget. You scored, I mean, there's a way to score two tiles. That happened like twice in our games. We're like, whoa, we got to score two tiles at the same time. And that was really fun because then you're like, oh, I wasn't prepared for that. Or like me, I'm a dummy. I picked. The, I counted out the right amount of clock clock ticks I needed to go and then pick the wrong die because like, oh, well, he's beating me in books, so I need to get books. Why did I take that die? Now that's going to score or, or, or this is going to happen and he's going to get a victory point anyway. Uh, so really fun game, uh, kind of a one note mechanism there. So it, like I said, this was on a uh, clearance at Amos Day for like four bucks. For four bucks. Yeah, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Fun little in a way filler game. All right gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, you know what to do. Game on.